The A1, Britain's longest road. Stretching almost 400 miles from the city of London to the heart of the Scottish capital. Connecting two nations and passing through 18 counties, it's an unrivaled highway used by hundreds of thousands of vehicles every day. We're going southbound down the A1 on the northbound carriageway. But not all journeys go to plan. I thought I'm uh, going to lose my life. Cars are coming close. It is the dangerous place to be. Lives can hang in the balance. The rear end of that vehicle, it's unrecognisable. This is actually the bodywork of the car. 24 hours a day. It's not a safe place here. There's a team of people who keep us safe from harm. The police. <laughs> response teams. We don't know whether they've got the road closed or we don't know what's happened. And traffic officers. Hey, keep going. Keeping Britain's most iconic road. Get out! On the move. Substantially damaged flatbed truck in lane two. The A1. The monster that it is, it'll, uh, it'll start to return to normal. Coming up. Police pull a suspected stolen car. Don't know if I report this car stolen. And its driver lands in serious trouble. You've been drinking, mate. I can smell drink on you. Oh, they had two glasses of wine, mate. A truck breakdown. We've got a live lane coming out here. Just watch traffic coming there. Puts lives on the line. Keep going. Steady. And the restaurant girls who serve up specials every day for A1 motorists. <laughs> yeah, they make you feel really welcome. That's why you keep coming back. The Great North Road passes through 18 different counties, more than any other highway in the UK. 15 different police forces patrol it. One of their key roles is to crack down on those using the road to plan and carry out crimes. Just south of Newcastle, PC Alan Keenlyside is lying in wait for the latest suspect. We're on the A1, we've got a vehicle over on the A19, so we're trying to shut off any access south. Alan has intelligence to suggest a suspected stolen car is heading south on the A1, but tonight visibility could hamper the operation. The problem is, with the traffic at this time of night, it's quite hard to spot registration numbers. It's a very dirty time of year and the salt and, and things on the, on the roads. But even in the gloom of a wet winter night, yeah, I think it's just gone past us. It was Delphi Alpha Foxtrot. Alan's eyes don't let him down. Yeah, it was a, it was a little Fiesta. Looked like red or orange, Ston AF. Was that northbound, southbound? Southbound. I'm just trying to, to see where it's gone. Yeah, 1234. It was one of around 12, 15 vehicles that went past in a batch. Um, I certainly can't see it. I'm just heading towards uh, the 690 now. Alan needs to check the registration plate with the control room to confirm that he has the right car. 24 Alpha Fox Drop 15. Yeah, that could be it. Southbound uh, approaching 690. No attempt to stop, low risk, speed 70. It's definitely the right car, but Alan has to wait to make his move. Backup is en route, but if this driver gets spooked, it could end in a risky high speed chase. Weather's dry, let's move to lane two, back into lane one, approaching the one mile marker for the 690. Then, as the car turns off the A1, Alan gets a break. Approaching red light now at the 690. That's him there, Joe. <laughs> Stand slack, all right? Good man. Just take it to my car. Don't be all right? Good man. Just, we've had a report this car stolen. All right? Stolen? Yeah. All right, take a seat. We'll find out what's going on.
Uh, drive is detained. Uh, vehicle stop. No injuries. No damage. Sorry, We've got the keys put. Um, I have keyless entry. Thing keyless entry. Two seconds. Uh, that's we'll sort it. We're just going. We're going to get around off the slip road and we'll sort it there. All right. <laughs> To minimise disruption to the A1, the suspected stolen car needs to be moved to a quieter location. What's your occupation? What's your job? Uh, Unemployed. But then, as Alan starts to question the driver, he becomes aware of another potential breach of the law. You've been drinking, mate. I'll, I'll give a little bit. Mm -hmm. Smell alcohol on you. I'm not saying you're over the limit. All I'm saying is I can smell drink on you. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying you. For a meal in the glass of wine, that's all. Right. The officers have pulled off a textbook interception tonight, but stopping the driver is only the beginning. We we'll have to caution you. You do not have to say, but may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given evidence. I now require to provide a specimen of breath, as I have reasonable cause to suspect you of driving a motor vehicle. Okay, have an alcohol in your body, all right, and that's because I can smell intoxicating liquor on your breath. Alan now has not only a potential stolen car to deal with, but a drink driver too. It's going to be a testing shift. Statistically, there's an increased risk of being involved in a serious accident on the A1 in wet and foggy conditions. It means traffic officers need to be extra vigilant when patrolling in bad weather. Now, in South Yorkshire, Paul Day and Rob Larkin are battling through a miserable January rush hour. 1-3, we're just passing the Texaco garage 3839 on the Alpha, over. Weather conditions today are dark, wet, raining and a bit of spray on the road as well, so it's making visibility quite limited. As day breaks, they receive a report that a broken down lorry is blocking the southbound carriageway just past the junction for the M62. We've got a further report now that it's a container wagon in lane one. Officers deal with around four and a half thousand breakdowns a year. A third of them are where a vehicle stops in a live lane, posing a real danger to all other motorists. No traffic, no hard shoulder. So what we do is we set it up, ready for a lane stop. And there it is. All to Alpha Charlie Echo 1-3. We've got a live lane coming out here, just watch traffic coming there, yeah? With traffic building quickly, it's vital the officers work as fast as possible. The rain and poor visibility are only making matters worse. Hey, up, drive. What's wrong with it, mate? It's not running here, it's not moving. What we'll do, yeah. leave it running, yeah. we'll come round the front of you, or we'll get somebody round the front of you, yeah. and we'll get you onto the hard shoulder, clear this lane. Auto Alpha Charlie Echo 1 3. This vehicle's uh, gearbox has failed. It does have air. Do we have a second unit can come and help us? Rob and Paul are under pressure to reopen the lane. A recovery truck is en route, but that could waste valuable time. So, a backup Highways England vehicle is the quickest option. If you stay in your cab, we'll sort it out. I'll give you the thumbs up when he's ready, knock your brake off, and we'll go in on the there. The other officers arrive within minutes, meaning the stranded lorry can be moved out of harm's way. Keep going, steady. Probably 40 ton, shifted, nice and easy. He's just talking to his boss now for recovery, and we'll wait for that, and he'll get back to us in a second. With the lorry shifted and recovery en route, Paul and Rob can now concentrate on getting the traffic flowing again. Auto Alpha Charlie, Echo 13, we can go back to 42 as well. Thanks to Charlie X Ray 12. Keep your eye on traffic behind you. Don't want hope to go wrong. Right. All right. right. That's okay. Nobody's a happy. Right. Thanks for your help. Nobody's caught, thank you. With the road reopened and traffic flowing, there's just one thing left to do. Translated, 
Put your hazard lights on. But the lorry driver doesn't understand. It's been a successful morning. He's got it, by job. Rob and Paul's swift action means the A1 has been reopened within 20 minutes. And the result is the danger for drivers has been kept to a minimum. Last year, more than 500 vehicles were stolen across the Northumbria police area. Just off the A1, 10 miles south of Newcastle, officers are still dealing with a car that's been reported as stolen. You're not under arrest, all right? You're detained until we can find out what's going on, all right? But PC Alan Keenleyside also believes the suspect may have been drinking, so wants to conduct a breathalyzer. But while he's sitting in the police car on his own, the driver puts something in his mouth. There's a common myth that sucking on a coin can change the alcohol reading on the test. You've just swallowed a pound coin. I didn't swallow a pound coin, no. So is it for the drink? No, it's for my toothache. After reading the suspect his rights, Alan conducts the breathalyzer. So we're nice into that. Three to four seconds in here, an audible click, and I'll tell you to stop. Blow. Keep going, 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 keep going. Stop. Well done. You failed. 48. 48, legal limit's 35. I'm not over though, I'm not really. You're not much over, but you're over, all right? Oh, they had two glasses of wine, like. The legal limit's 35, you've blown 48. OK, the breath test indicates the proportion of alcohol in your breath exceeds the prescribed limit. I'm arresting you and taking you to... Durham. Joe, where's the nearest police station here? South Shields. Although the car was reported as stolen a few weeks ago, the driver claims he got it from his parents as a Christmas present. The car's not stolen, is it? At the minute, it is. At the minute, we've got to think that that car's stolen. All right, if it's... My control room operator has told me that it's a stolen car, right? But we'll crack on and make those inquiries while we're processing you in custody. As the suspect is taken away, Alan searches the car. So this, this receipt here is from... 10th of 1st, 2016, over a year old, and that was in there. Now, if this vehicle had been legitimately sold, it's very rare that you find receipts and bits of paperwork left from the previous owner. If it's legitimately sold, it's generally stripped of everything, you know? So, um, yeah. So we'll leave all this here. We've had a quick look, and um, this will be uplifted and taken back to our secure pound, and we'll do some further inquiries about it. The suspected stolen car will now be seized until police can establish who it really does belong to. Stolen property, it's always nice to get that property returned to the rightful owners. There's pretty much nothing more satisfying than that. For Alan and the other officers, it's been a successful operation all round. I've just contacted the colleagues that took the, uh, the driver of the vehicle into custody um, following his failed breath test at the roadside. The legal limit's 35, he blew 48, but actually, by the time you get to custody, sometimes 48 was right on that level where it's likely, if he's coming down, if he's been a while since he had a drink, that level could be coming down to a point where no further action is going to be taken against him. However, in this particular case, it appears he's actually going the other way. So he's recently had a drink, his alcohol levels continuing to climb, and I think my colleague said he'd blown 57 in custody. So that's a good, firm charge for um, driving alcohol level above the limit. We see the fatal road accidents. We see the misery that drink drivers and drug drivers bring to families. So actually, to, to catch a drink driver, to get them off the street, to get them in front of the courts, it's hugely rewarding for, a, for any traffic cop anywhere in this country. On the A1 south of Retford in Nottinghamshire, it's the start of a busy afternoon at one of Britain's most iconic roadside restaurants. Ashley, Danielle and Mary have all got plenty of little chef experience. Are you all right today, love? Yeah, are you? What time are you on till? Three. What time are you on? Eight. Oh, I'm OK. <laughs> <laughs> 
I left school when I was 16. I actually applied for the Burger King. There used to be a Burger King next door, but then they asked me to come into here, and I've been here ever since. Love it. Oh, the hat! It's just so nice, because you don't think, oh, God, I've got to go to work, and you're just on with your friends. I fit in there perfect. My dream job would to be six foot two and be a model. But I'm not even five foot. There's not much that people can do when you're this size. When you're getting mistaken for a nine-year-old girl. The restaurant caters for more than 45,000 A1 users every year. The A1 is literally there. When there's accidents outside or the road gets really busy, we seem to find that everyone comes into here because they don't want to sit in the traffic or whatever. And there's always accidents, always, no matter what. The A1 is always having them. And there's one dish the waitresses serve more than any other. Olympic. Nearly 2,000 a day across the country. There you go. Our most popular meal on the menu is an Olympic breakfast. Prince Harry, was it? It was in the paper when he'd gone to one of the little chefs just for an Olympic breakfast. So obviously we are quite famous for that. Bacon, bacon, egg, beans and beans. Oh, I can be cooking about 1,000 Olympics a day sometimes. It feels like that anyway, doesn't it, Mary? Yeah. If you get an Olympic at night, at na say like quarter to 10 at night, they just walk in and want an Olympic breakfast. It's like... Mary's like, you could have had a jacket potato. Yeah. <laughs> It's just one of the dishes that attracts many A1 regulars. Thank you very much, Ashley. It's OK, Master Redpick. We've got quite a few regulars. Table three, they're regulars. Danielle's friend, the lady, she comes in and she'll have a chicken platter. Mr Bruce either has his scampi or his gammon. Oh, look, back again. Will always has a Jubilee pancake at night time. Or we'll have a banana split, and he makes us do the banana split. And he's so picky with it, he likes his bread split down middle with three lumps of ice cream and a squirty cake. He's so picky. He's so picky. Past his little ship every day, he's going to and from work. So he's just handy to call in breakfast, dinner and tea sometimes. Hello, my dear. And Ashley's front of house charm works wonders. We've got to know him now, especially Ashley. She's really funny, that. <laughs> really funny. Uh, a lot of banter with her. So posh. So, yeah, they make you feel really welcome. That's why you keep coming back. Hello! I mainly like to seat people down, take their orders, and have such like general chit chat with them, which ends up not general chit chat, it ends up like gossip. So much gossip. Everyone who comes in asks for Ashley because obviously she's the face of the place. Don't tell still fried bread. So, they never know my name because I'm always in here. <laughs> I have to make sure that she's on duty when, I'm, when we're coming up. So, but it, it just breaks up the journey. There was a guy that like come in a couple of weeks ago and he was like, is, is Ashley not here? And he was like, tell her I've been asking about her and I'll pop down soon to see her. Don't let me go. <laughs> oh, they seem to know you. Seem to know you pretty well. And despite the busy shifts, working at the restaurant is a job the girls love. <laughs> Once when um, you took, uh, you went over to take an order and the person said he was having a go at his kid for not revising and he said, you've got to revise otherwise you'll end up somewhere like this. <gasps> I've got everything that I want. Yeah. You know, we drive nice We don't cars. go without. No, we don't go without, so it's a perfect job to have, I think. <laughs> You get good days and bad days, obviously. But I probably wouldn't have done it for 10 years if I thought it was that bad, did it, would I? More than 100 times a year, the A1's traffic officers are called to help fix this major road. One of the main defects they face are potholes which can pose a serious risk to driver safety. <laughs> On a two-lane section of the road near Doncaster, Rob Larkin and Paul Day have received a report about an urgent repair which is needed on the carriageway. What we found is a pothole that needed immediate repair. We've called it in to contractors who've um, deployed a unit 
We've done a bit of a liaise and a bit of a plan. We're going to pull out into traffic and block the carriageway. That'll allow the contractor to change, to repair the pothole. One small pothole can lead to a tragedy. So even though closing the road will still cause huge disruption, the works are essential. If a motorbike hit that pothole, then it could literally throw the rider straight off into, into the path of oncoming traffic. Yeah. You assess the potential against the impact to traffic that's traveling, and it's better to have it repaired straight away. A necessary evil. A necessary evil, yeah. One three, we're right behind um, Yankee Uniform 1-2, and uh, we're going to block traffic now, over. Paul and Rob immediately shut down both lanes. Just gives a minute, there's repair in a pothole and there's also a... Uh, there's also something needs to go on further up. Not for two seconds. So what we've done there is we've utilised the, 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 the heavy traffic to create a gap. We've stopped traffic. We've spoken to drivers to let them know how we're going to do and what we're doing. Meanwhile, further down the road, repairs begin on the whole. What we've done here is we've created a safety buffer between the contractors working in the main carriageway and the traffic behind. Yes, it inconveniences for a period of time, but at least everybody's safe doing the job. With standing traffic mounting, there's no time to lose. In fact, it's, it's just running over the, the tarmac now just to push it down into the hole, so it, it shouldn't be too long as it's completed. After just six minutes, the hole is fixed. There's just enough time to pick up some more dangerous debris. The contractors will take care of that later. Why did you have to move that? Just because it was there. All received. Just about to release the block. Robin Paul's drive off is a signal for the traffic behind to start moving. Yeah, one three, the we've started rolling. But just as they set off again, the officers receive a report of another lane closure just ahead. It's vital the traffic doesn't gather speed too quickly, so Rob and Paul need to create a rolling roadblock past the incident. That's going to cause a problem. So what happened there was we put the block on as they were turning to put the lane closure on. We've released the traffic nice and steadily into the closure just pre-planning stuff, making sure that everything we got covered, going on, was covered so that members of the public didn't just come upon something that they didn't know was there. And it all went rather well. Spanning nearly 400 miles, the A1 passes through bleak countryside and built-up cities. Different parts of the road have different speed limits imposed, from 30 to 70 miles per hour. For the Northumbria Police Force, the A1 is their biggest and busiest road, so cracking down on speeding motorists is a big part of an officer's job. In the last year, the police have prosecuted more than 57,000 drivers for speeding offences. And now, just a few miles north of Newcastle, PC Alan Keenleyside is tracking the latest culprit. Just had a car in front. Um, he moved into lane two really quite harshly. I'm just going to follow him for a little bit. I want to see what his manner of driving is like. The driver is heading south towards Gateshead and doesn't seem to have noticed Alan in his rearview mirror. I'm quite happy to move backward and forward into lane one. But I don't want, as a member of the public, to get between me and that car. But it seems Alan may have spoken too soon. And I'll just flash the blues. That's it, thank you. By the looks of it, this vehicle's going to be taking this slip road off. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have a little word. As the driver enters Gateshead, he's still unaware that Alan is following him. 30, and he's doing 44 in the 30s. As the driver pulls into the car park, Alan makes his move. I was following at 84 on the A1 from Seatonburn. And then when we came through the 30s, you were doing 44 mile an hour in a 30 mile an hour limit. Okay, is there any reason why you've travelled like that all the way down? 
Okay, do you have any identification or anything like that? I'll just check your, uh, your driving license in. Whereabouts are you heading to, Mick? Just here. Just here. All right, no worries. Is it your vehicle, is it? Yeah, it is. Okay, no worries, though. I'm just going to check you on the computer. If you just come take a seat in my car. Thank you. The minimum penalty for speeding is a £100 fine and three penalty points. Alan is keen to show the driver evidence of his erratic driving. What alerted us to you, all right, is when you came on at Seaton Burn on the A1, you moved quite violently from lane one into lane two. I'm following you there, all right. Okay, so you're already sitting at 77, and then your speed um, increased. Can you see in the bottom right-hand corner there? 84, 85, all right, in a 70, okay? Is, is, is what it is on that one. When we've come to the metro centre, which is just the slip road up here before I've asked you to stop, you've come at a 30 mile an hour limit and your vehicle's in front there, it's doing 44, okay? And that's the reasons why you've been stopped uh, here today. I'm just gonna check out on the system. Do you have any points or anything on your licence or anything? Uh, three, no, I've got three points. Alan discovers the man is a professional lorry driver, so more points on his licence could lead to him losing his job. Alan has a very difficult decision to make. We could issue, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of a section 59 warning. I'm not going to do that, all right? I'd like to think that this word tonight is sufficient. At the end of the day, we're an HGV driver, all right? It's your living, you don't need things like that coming your way, all right? It's going to be words of advice, all right? So lesson learned, keep it down, you never know when we're there, all right? And we'll, we'll leave it at that tonight, all right? All right, no worries at all. There's your, there's your card back and we'll let you out. The driver realises he's been very lucky to get away without any points. When I got stopped, I was gutted because I, I was in the wrong. I could have lost my job. Obviously, I'm a HAV driver, so I should know better, really. The police officer explained everything and he was fair with us, so obviously he could have given us a lot worse than what I've got off with. In speeding cases, police officers like Alan are allowed to use their discretion. Depending on the circumstances, they can issue fines and make arrests, or they can take a more lenient approach. That chap there is a prime example of somebody who, he seems like a thoroughly nice person. He's got the right attitude for me. He was sitting there, very apologetic, hands up. You know, he wasn't arguing. If he'd argued the case, it's all on, uh, it's all on video. Um, and, and really, it's down to the officer how he wants to do it. And, and, and our thought in that situation yeah, words of advice is probably going to uh, it's probably going to suffice. The motorist suspected of drink driving pleaded guilty to the offence. He was disqualified from driving for 36 months and fined 235 pounds, including costs. After police inquiries, the red Fiesta was returned to the driver, who was considered to be its rightful owner.